Please see the link in the description to download a worksheet for this video. We suggest that viewers who are sensitive to the life sciences have an adult watch this video first to ensure it is suitable for that viewer. If you have not already done so, we suggest that you first watch the videos on plant adaptive traits and part two of animal adaptive traits before watching this video. These wildebeest and zebras are on their annual migration. They will travel north about 500 miles, during which they will eat and drink from the same places. Even though they get along, they are competing with each other for water and food, and that competition is hurting both species. For example, this watering hole has enough water to quench the thirst of only 1,000 animals. But there are 1,000 wildebeest and also 1,000 zebras that are coming to this watering hole. That means some zebras and wildebeest will not get any water, so they will stay thirsty and might even die before they reach the next watering hole. The zebras could say that if the wildebeest had not come the migration, then all the zebras would have had enough water and food along the way. Likewise, the wildebeest could say that if the zebras had not come the migration, then all the wildebeest would have had enough water and food along the way. But since both species came on the migration, both species will be harmed by this competition over limited resources. Competition is one of eight major interactions between species that can affect the well-being and survival of one or both species. In this video, we will show common examples to illustrate the definitions of each type of interaction. An interaction describes how two organisms affect each other. We group these based on the length of the interaction. Short-term interactions include predation, pollination, and seed dispersal. Long-term interactions are also called symbiosis and include competition, parasitism, mutualism, commensalism, and amensalism. In predation, one organism eats all or some of another organism. Typical animal predators are cats, dogs, hawks, and sharks. Typical animal prey are small fish or herbivores such as young rabbits, lambs, and chipmunks. Herbivory is a type of predation which involves plants. Although these deer are not killing this tree by eating some of its leaves, biologists classify this interaction as a type of predation, since one organism, in this case a deer, is eating part of another organism, in this case a plant. In predation involving only animals or those involving plants, each interaction between those members is short-term. Only the predator benefits from the interaction. The one that is totally or partially eaten is harmed or killed by the interaction. The second type of short-term interaction is pollination that involves animals. The interaction between a plant species and the pollinators only lasts a few weeks of the year, so is also a short-term interaction. Unlike predation, in this interaction both species benefit. The animal drinks a sugary nectar so gets nutrients and energy, and the plant has its genes spread to other plants. The third type of short-term interaction is seed dispersal that involves animals. As with pollination, the interaction between a plant species and the animal that eats the fruit only lasts a short time, and both of the species benefit. The animal gets to eat a product full of nutrients, and the plant gets to have its seeds spread to distant places. Next, we'll introduce five common types of symbiosis, which means long-term interactions. In addition to the competition between species that we illustrated in our opening segment, sometimes biologists also use the word compete to refer to an interaction between two members of the same species. For example, there is a limited amount of space on these cliffs for birds of the same species to make a nest. Once all of the safest spaces are taken, other members will have to settle for places that are not as safe from predators. In a parasitic interaction, a parasite takes something from another organism without getting anything in return. Common parasites are fleas and ticks that suck blood from the animal they are on. The parasite gets food, but the other animal is losing blood and is bothered by the discomfort. In a mutualistic interaction, both species benefit. These oxpeckers are taking ticks off a water buffalo. By removing the ticks, they're helping the water buffalo save its blood and also reducing the pain from the ticks. The birds are getting nutrients by eating the ticks. Since both the water buffalo and the birds are benefiting, we call this mutualism. The oxpeckers take ticks off many animal species, so they have mutualistic interactions with many species. The two most famous examples of mutualism are in the ocean. The first famous example involves these tiny cleaner fish that eat parasites from the gills of larger fish. 
The larger fish could easily catch and kill the cleaner fish, but instead the larger fish stays still and benefits from the cleaner fish's services. The cleaner fish benefit by having food brought to them that they can easily access, so both species of fish benefit from this interaction. This is a barracuda, one of the most dangerous fish in the ocean. It has come to a place where the cleaner fish stay, called a cleaning station. It remains still while the cleaner fish remove parasites from its gills and other parts of its body. The second famous example of mutualism involves a white and orange colored fish, we commonly call the clownfish, that lives with an invertebrate animal called a sea anemone. The sea anemone has poisonous tentacles, which it uses to capture, then eat its prey. The clownfish has a protective layer, so it is not affected by the sea anemone's poisonous tentacles, and can safely live among the tentacles. By living among the tentacles, the clownfish is protected from being attacked by other fish. In return for this protection, the clownfish chases away butterfly fish as a service to the sea anemone. That service by the clownfish helps the sea anemone because butterfly fish eat tentacles. So, this long-term relationship benefits both the clownfish and the sea anemone. In everyday use, we often use the word symbiotic with the phrase symbiotic relationship to refer to an interaction which benefits both species, such as mutualism. But in biology, we avoid the term symbiotic relationship since it can refer to several types of interactions which can be harmful to one or both species, so it's too vague. The next type of symbiotic interaction is called commensalism. In commensalism, one species benefits but the other species neither benefits or is harmed. These cattle egrets are tall birds that walk near grazing cattle. As the cattle walk through grass, they disturb insects which fly a little above the ground, such that the birds can easily see and eat them. You can see this bird appear to snatch something in the air, which is likely an insect. The birds benefit from staying close to the cattle, but the cattle do not benefit from the birds and are also not harmed by them. Another classic example of commensalism are barnacles on whales. This close-up photo shows barnacles on a humpback whale, which look like white shells with a central opening. Inside the shells are small animals that eat nutrients in the ocean. Barnacles make a glue so they stick to any surface and are common on rocks and the bottom of boats. When barnacles are attached to rocks, they are at risk for being eaten by starfish and snails. But those attached to whales are safe from starfish and snails, so they benefit from the long-term interaction with whales. Since the whales are not harmed or benefited by this interaction, we call this commensalism. The last type of symbiotic interaction is called amensalism. In this interaction, one species is harmed or killed, but the other species has no benefit or harm. An example is these elephants walking along the grass. They may kill some blades of grass or insects on the grass as they walk on them. But the elephants are not benefiting by killing those organisms, since the elephants are not eating those organisms. And those organisms were not harming the elephants. Here's a summary of this topic. Please pause this video if you wish to read this. If you're interested in practice tests that are similar to state exams, but with detailed, colorful explanations for each answer, then please see our apps in the App Store. Many of these are free and none expire or limit their function. Since we only make educational products for children, none of our apps have third-party advertising, in-app purchasing, or connect to the internet. Please subscribe if you'd like to be notified of future educational videos we make. Thanks for your attention.